Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled, The Man Who Couldn't Change. Marquis. This is the smoking taste you can tell blindfolded. This is Marquis. Marquis is the filter tip cigarillo with a difference. As mild and smooth smoking as a cigarette. If you're a cigarette smoker, Marquis is made for you. Try one. You'll enjoy the difference. Marquis. Raise your glass to Witzenberg, since 1700, the heart and home of our finest wines. Today, Witzenberg has a wine for every facet of your glass, dry white or stein, dry red, perle or perle rosé. Raise your glass to the magnificent Witzenberg range. You're enjoying true wine of the country. What is this new kind of cleanness women are discovering for their dishes? It's sunlight cleanness. What sunlight cleanness? A fresh, sparkling cleanness you've never known before. Why fresh? New sunlight liquid has real lemon juice. And sparkling? Sunlight liquid is concentrated. It's got the greatest grease-cutting power to give you sparkling dishes every time. And new sunlight liquid with real lemon juice means real economy. Just one teaspoonful washes a whole sinkful of dishes sparkling clean. Sunlight clean. It was a hot summer in the sprawling Texas town of El Paso, 1895, and the wildest parts of the Wild West were now tamed by the Texas Rangers. The bad men were either dead or in jail, and that was how the embittered John Wesley Harden found it when he returned from a ten-year stretch in Huntsville County Prison. John Wesley Harden, a veteran of a hundred gunfights and a man with forty notches on his guns. He'd been brutally treated in prison, and when he finally emerged, he looked 20 years older than his real age, 42. He was a legend in his old time, and started to take advantage of it. In his favorite haunt, the Acme Saloon, John Wesley Harden's voice was the loudest. Around him always gathered a group of cronies and admirers, many of them women. His current lady love was Barbara Rose, the wife of a nasty little cattle rustler, Martin Rose, a man being hunted down by the chief of the local Texas Rangers, Captain Jeff Milton. One afternoon, Martin Rose rode up the main street, and Milton was waiting for him. Stand right where you are, Rose. No, don't turn around. Is that you, Milton? That's right, boy. Now, unbuckle that gun belt and let it drop. Make it slow and easy now. What are you taking me in for? I ain't done nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Can't say you weren't worn, boy. The death of the cattle rustler caused quite a stir in town. And nobody was more delighted by his demise than John Wesley Harden. Well, I'm kind of annoyed that that Texas Ranger shot Martin Rose. I was going to do it anyway. Oh, now the way it's clear for me to pay court to his cute little widow. <laughs> you know, that Jeff Milton did the killing, maybe, but I got the prize, huh, fella? Yeah, Wes, she's all yours now. Well, here comes the little lady herself. Hey, sorry about your husband, Barbara. You ain't, Wes. You're making a celebration of it, and I'll join you. You ain't sorry, Bab. Sorry about that little snake, huh? He asked for it a dozen times over. I guess it would have ended up with him and me fighting it out in the main street if Jeff Milton hadn't gotten first. So I heard you yelling before, Wes. I reckon it's maybe that Jeff Milton might be fancying you, Babs. I saw mine you last night. 
You saying I killed Martin Rose so I could take his wife, Harden? Well, hello, Cap Milton. I reckon you'll have to draw your own conclusions. Don't tangle with them, Wes. I want to put on record before all these witnesses that Martin Rose was killed because he drew a gun and tried to resist arrest. I did my duty to this community. Wes Harden is a damned liar if he said different. Harsh words, Milton. Very harsh words. You wouldn't talk to me like that if I were carrying my guns. You're lying again, Harden. You got those guns of yours under that fancy long coat. I'm standing here giving you a chance to use them. Or tell everybody in here that you're a liar. Well, Harden, what's it to be? Gentlemen, I reckon I must have told a lie. Seems we got some business to attend to in Jairus. Well, one second. Hey, I don't think Wes will show his nose in town again after that, Babs. Fancy Wes Harden backing down like that. Who'd ever believe it? After all the big talk, too. Yeah, times had changed. Eleven years before, Wes Harden would have gunned Milton down without a second thought. The confrontation was the talk of El Paso for weeks after. Wes's cronies maintained that he'd only backed down because of Milton's position. They all knew that Wes still had his famous calfskin waistcoat, which was specially fitted to carry two guns. In spite of having to cross-draw them, Wes was faster than most men with conventional holster and would be sure to use them against any lesser man than Captain Milton. Their theory was to be put to the test two months later, when Wes rolled back into El Paso. While he was booking into the hotel, a drama was being enacted in the Acme Saloon, where young John Selman, a deputy sheriff, was having trouble with Barbara Rose. Get your damn filthy hands off me! I'm taking you in, Barbara, and mean it! I've done nothing to you! Last night you pulled out a gun and fired four shots down the main street. There are plenty of witnesses. So what? I didn't hit no one. Makes no difference. You are causing a disturbance. Now come on, don't make no more trouble. Are you gonna lock me up for that? Are you gonna come or do I have to drag you out of here? You wouldn't dare! Oh no! Hey! Let go of me! Help me, somebody! Why, you big punk! Help! <laughs> Young John Selman pulled her all the way to the town jail and handed her over to the sheriff. Meanwhile, having now booked his room, Wes Harden walked into the Acme Saloon. The English barman quickly told him what had happened to Barbara. Yes, he was very rough with her. Yeah, she she said he wouldn't have dared done it if it had been with you around, Wes. She did? Well, I reckon she's right at that. <laughs> well, I'm ready to avenge her honor. Will you take a message to someone for me, Jake? Sure, Wes. What is it? Tell him I'm waiting in here for him. Yeah, I'll do that. He'll be over at the jailhouse. Pour me a long whiskey, Jackson. Hey, better still, give me the bottle. Wes, you and I have been friends since you came out of jail last year, right? That's right, Jackson. What about it? Yeah, well, don't take it amiss if I say what I feel, all right? I think you're making a big mistake in calling out a lawman like this. Ah, uh, he's only a little lawman. A deputy, you said. It isn't like the old days, Wes, believe me. Shoot even one little lawman and you'll have a thousand or more Texas Rangers hunting you down. Not if I make him draw first. The law ain't changed in that respect. And if he don't draw? Then that makes him a yellow-bellied coward. Don't look at me like that, Jackson. When I backed down from Milton, I knew it wouldn't draw first. He was only using the situation to get a, a name for himself as the man who killed Job Wesley Harden, a privilege I'll give to no man. I made the wise move. But one day, we'll face up to each other again, and I'll blast him off his feet. But, Wes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't get away with that kind of thing nowadays. It's all gone law and order, church business. I don't believe it, Jackson. A man with guns as fast as mine is still king. Yeah, well, I'd hate to see you go back to jail, Wes. Or lying out there in the dust. You won't. There'll be others who'll be lying out there in the dirt. Men like Selman Milton and a few others I can mention. Yeah. Here's Jake, coming back. Well, 
Is he coming? Hey, sorry, Wes, he refused. Says it ain't his job to go dueling. You back down? Yeah. Well, well, well. Well, you hear that, everybody? That big hero, Selman, won't come here and face me. That's because he's only fit to fight and manhandle women. Like y'all saw an hour ago. Now, what kind of lawman is he? He's scared of you, Wes. Knows your reputation. Well, let him come here and fight like a man. He's a chicken liver coyote, and I'll shame him into facing up to me. You got the drop of white bull hiccup once, didn't you, Wes? Yeah, that's right, boy. Tried to arrest me in Abilene. Told me to hand over my guns, and when I did, I gave him the old border roll and took him by surprise. For three days, Wes Harden called young John Selman every name he could think of to make him take up the challenge. All to no effect. However, Selman's father, known as Old John, lived a few miles outside El Paso. He'd been a gunslinger in his day, but had changed to the side of the law in later life. At this time, he was sheriff of Precinct 1 of El Paso County. But now that the Texas Rangers had tamed the Badlands, old John's job was easy. He'd run to fat, rarely wore a gun, and spent most of his time farming. He lived in a small house alone with his daughter, Betsy. Hey, Pa! Hmm. What is it? Hmm. You're back early from town. There's trouble there, Pa, and John's right in the middle of it. What do you mean? Wes Harden's back in town, and he's trying to force John into shooting it out with him. It seems John arrested Harden's girl. Ah, well, better ride in and see what it's all about. Harden's got a big mouth, and one of these days, some feller's gonna permanently shut it for him. Hey, Robert, bring my horse up here. You gonna get my gun belt from the bedroom, Batsy. You're not gonna talk to Harden by your pa? Oh, just a few gentle words of advice, that's all. But he may try to fight. No, I don't think so. He's all bluff. His argument with Milton a couple of months ago proves that. Harden ain't gonna risk prison or a noose just to settle an argument. He knows he can't get away with it in the same way he did in the old days. Now, hurry, hurry, fetch my gun belt. I, I don't want to be getting there at sundown. Okay, Pa, so long as you promise not to go risking your neck against that madman. There must be a reason why, all over the world, the swing is to Rothman's king size. It's simply this, Rothman's extra-length finest filter, and the best tobacco money can buy give you true king-size flavor. Rothman's king-size really satisfies. Call Lillian Sachs. I can't. My nose is blocked up. He can't. His nose is blocked up. He can't. His nose is blocked up. Use Tristan nasal spray. Use Tristan nasal spray. Use Tristan nasal spray. <sighs> Call Lillian Sachs. It was just afternoon when Wes Harden walked down the street with some of his pals, his arm linked in Barbara Rose's. Sheriff Bronson had just released her from the jailhouse, where for three days she'd shouted and cussed. To relieve himself of his noisy prisoner, he'd reduced her seven-day sentence for good behavior. As the group walked towards the hotel, old John Selman rode in from the other side of town. Bronson will be sorry he kept him for three days. You see if he ain't, Babs. One day he'll cross me and he'll end up lying in that dirt over there. Oh, he ain't such a bad guy. Takes his job too serious is all. Makes no difference you're pleading for him. He could have found a technicality and let you go three days ago. What do you reckon, Will? Yeah, that's right, Wes. No need for him to have locked her up. Hey, you see who that is riding down the street? Well, if it ain't old John Selman come to give that boy of his a talking to, I'll bet. He's coming over here, Wes. Good 
say to you, Wes, mind if we have a friendly chat? Oh, come and join us for a drink at the hotel, John. Haven't seen you for years. Where you live now? Uh, got a spread just outside town. Uh, uh, now look, Wes. Yeah? What I gotta see won't take long enough to last through a drink. Better I see it right here. You want to talk about that son of yours? The one who doesn't know how to treat a lady? Oh, he knows how to treat a lady. When he meets one. Don't get too much practice in this town. But that you mean my barber ain't a lady? I ain't saying nothing. Except this. Keep your big mouth shut about my ball. I'll say what I like. And nothing I've said ain't true. Look. John's a good kid, Wes. Oh, yeah. Times ain't like they used to be when the man with the fastest gun was the man most likely to live. That's so. Today's kids don't go in for this fast draw, fast shoe stuff. Now, you and me, Wes, we, we fought together and, and drank together. Oh, they were great days, great memories. Now, look, take my advice, Wes. Hang up your guns and confine yourself to telling stories in the act. Well, the world's gone soft. It's full of lily-livered cowards. And your kid heads the list, John. My kid's all right, Wes. So you better keep quiet. He won't fight you because he's got enough sense to know it's suicide. Well, you just better take him back to your spread and put him in the chicken run where he belongs. You're forcing me to make a hard decision, Wes. I'll say it loud so as all the world can hear. Young John Selman is a yellow-bellied coward. Now, that satisfy you, John. Now, tell him to save your family pride and meet me here in the street like a man. No drunken jailbird says that without paying for it. Hey, hey, did you hear that? Go on, clear away there, folks. There's going to be lead flying. That's all you need, Wes. Gun him down. Old John Selman backed off into the street, his eyes fixed and hardened, and his right hand hovering inches away from the butt of his gun. The townsfolk who'd gathered around moved out of the light of fire. It was like a scene from the old days again. Wes Harden patted his long, elegant black coat. I'm waiting, Wes. Marcuson, you give us a signal, huh? Yeah, okay. I haven't got my guns with me, Selman. That ain't like you. Never reckoned I'd need them today. Well, go get them. I'll wait here. Yeah. You wait here. Inside the Acme Saloon, Wes Harden bought drinks all round. He was his old boastful self. While outside, an old man sat on a barrel and waited. Pa. Pa, they just told me what happened. You can't fight Hardin. You get back to your job, son, and let me deal with Folks, this. Folks, this is my quarrel, Pa. If anybody has to stand up to him, it's me. Look, you keep out of it. But if I come off worst, you still stay out Please, of it. Please, Pa. Go back to the ranch. Forget it. Folks will understand. Oh, you don't understand, John. Since Wes Hardin backed down from Jeff Milton, has been spoiling for a gunfight to bolster his reputation. Too many folks have laughed at his loudmouth boasting in the Acme, and it's hurting him. You were to be the sacrifice, boy, and I ain't going to allow it. He knows you're no good with a fast draw, so you were perfect for the part. You're going to be the sacrifice instead, is that it? Listen, Bar, you're so out of practice with that gun, you'd put up a worse show against him than me. Uh, I give you that. But you got a lot of years ahead of you. I'm old and spent. The world can afford me. Ah, I... don't talk like that, please. Okay, so we can both pull out of town and forget all about it. Maybe folks will call us cowards, but we'll still be alive. The Salmons ain't cowards, John. Just a uh, mind cautious, maybe. What good is your dead body lying in the street out here gonna do us, Pa? I told you, son. Wes is spoiling for a gunfight. If it ain't us he guns down, it'll be some other poor feller who can't use a gun properly. Until he's dead or he's killed somebody, this town ain't safe. No lawman can do anything about it until after it's over. On top of that, he's got so many friends in town, he'll more than likely get off with a self-defense plea. You know how it goes. I never, never thought of it like that before. So you just go back and do your work and leave this to me. It don't seem right, though. He started the quarrel with me, not now you, Let's not I... go into that again, huh? 
It's our quarrel. <sighs> okay. Where is Harton anyway? Sadly, he was going for his guns, but I, I saw him mosey off into the Acme. But I ain't hurrying things none. We got all day. Hey, Wes, tell the boys about that time them Jilos tried to drown you in Huntsville Pass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sure scared the pants off them when I played possum and they thought I was dead. <laughs> hey, hey, Jackson, put up another round along the bar. Well, what do you say, boys? Sure, yeah. well, well. Hey, what about the rest of that story, Wes? Yeah. Give me a chance, Jake. <sighs> well, that's better. My throat was getting drier than an Avahoo Creek. You know... <laughs> Those warders of the pan hated my guts. It made them feel big to have me at the wrong end of their cusses and kicks. One day, they dropped me down this hole in the ground and started pumping in water. I had a hand pump down there and had to pump it back. It should be you out there, not Pa. I tried to convince him of that, too. He chased me away. Said it was a matter of family honor and his duty to the town. It don't seem right. Why should Pa have to do the dirty work? I'm going to him. Lend me one of those shotguns. Stay away, Betsy, for Pa's sake. Lend me a shotgun. No, keep out of it. I ain't gonna let you get mixed up in this. It ain't women's business. No, we'll see about that. Betsy, come back here. What's the use? Pa'll soon chase her back here. She's as cussing and as stubborn as he is. And that was another one for good help. <laughs> Say, that must be some kind of record, Wes. Three Cook County sheriffs in a row. <laughs> hey, say, when are you going to get your guns, Wes? Old John will be dying of old age soon. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I guess it's time to kill that stupid fat fool out there. Yeah. Well, all of you drink up and get out there in the street ready for the show. Yeah, you're right. You hear me? Everybody outside. Well, Wes, I don't intend to miss the show either. Jackson, you just stay here and pour me another drink. And yeah, have one yourself. You think that's wise? Let me be the judge, huh? Anything you say, Wes. Why don't you go on in and get him, John? Paul? Oh, Batsy, what are you doing here? I told you to stay at home. I just talked to John. I can't let you go through with this. Oh, come back to the ranch with me. Please, Pa. I can't do that. Now go back and leave me alone. This ain't your business. It is my business. Girl, you've made up my mind for me. Pete, Sam, take a hold of her for oh, me. No, Pa. Oh, let go of me. Let go of me. Old John Stallman walked towards the saloon and pushed open the batwing doors. The crowd pushed forward, appearing inside as he disappeared from sight. What are you moving away like that for, Jackson? Don't bother about drinking that, Wes. Huh? Look, who's behind you? Turn and face me, Harden. I waited outside long enough. I in turn, Stallman. Besides, I still ain't got my guns. You've had time. Plenty of it. You should be glad I'm giving you extra time to enjoy before I kill you. Somebody's got to die in this town today. Everyone knows that. Why are you so damn sure it's got to be me? Because you're fat, slow, and a sight, a yellow-bellied kid. You deserve to die, Selman. Turn round and face me, Harding. Uh, go outside again and wait. I'll deal with you later. You gonna turn? Go away, fat man. Can't you see you're bothering me? Old John was in a torment of indecision. His breathing was labored and his hands shook with pent-up fury, waiting to be unleashed. And Harden's final remark did it. Jackson... Will you oblige me by kicking that old goat into the street where it belongs? That's it, Harden! They shot him from behind, John. Somebody had to die. Can't you see that? 
And, yeah. and who deserved it most? Raise your glass to Witzenberg. Since 1700, the heart and home of our finest wines. Today, Witzenberg has a wine for every facet of your glass. Dry white or stein, dry red, perle or perle rosé. Raise your glass to the magnificent Witzenberg range. You're enjoying true wine of the country. Shield gives a confidence that actually shows in your eyes. Put on Shield deodorant and it's dry in seconds. That's the way it stays right through the day. Shield never makes you feel sticky. It just protects you and keeps you dry, feminine, fresh. Wear Shield and the only thing you show is confidence. Shield gives a confidence that actually shows in your eyes, in your eyes. There must be a reason why, all over the world, the swing is to Rothman's king size. It's simply this, Rothman's extra length, finest filter, and the best tobacco money can buy give you true king size flavor. Rothman's king size really satisfies. After Hardin's death, Captain Jeff Milton arrived back in El Paso. Hearing the commotion, he pushed his way into the Acme Saloon and surveyed the scene. He stooped down and unbuttoned Hardin's coat. It fell open. You see that, huh? Hardin had both his guns all the time. But he said he was going to get them. That's why he wouldn't turn and face old John. Reckon the old man wouldn't shoot him in the back. Reckon wrong this time, didn't he? Tried that game with me once, as you all know. Seems it didn't work so well the second time around. Now that the fear John Wesley Harden was dead, the crowd sided with and supported old John Selman. His plea of justifiable homicide was accepted, and he was allowed to return home to his family. This story is based on fact, and even today many historians of the old American West are puzzled why Wes Harden made no attempt to face Selman. Could it have been his arrogant self-confidence? Or had his terrible experiences in Huntsville Penitentiary turned him into a boastful coward, living in his world of past glories? High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal.